In this video, we're going to be checking out the R Visual Seamless Transition Pack called Camera Move. Okay, so when you first download the transition pack, you get a folder like this. And what we need to do is bring this project into DaVinci Resolve. But I have issues with uh, the media files not linking up properly if I just try to open it there. So what you need to do is right click over here and restore project archive. And I'll go to my desktop, click open. And this could take a few minutes, depending on the speed of your machine. Okay, and there we have it. All right, so here's our transitions here. They give you a little preview file here, um, but that'll be replaced by your actual footage when you go to the next step. So um, let's open up a separate project, and then I'm gonna show you how we import these transitions into the project that you want to use them for. What we need to do is go back to our project manager. And you want to right click in an empty space over here and just make sure that dynamic project switching is enabled. This way the uh, files will copy over properly without any kind of linking issues. Um, so let's create a new project. Uh, test. Okay, so we're in our new project. So I'll just go back to Project Manager, open up our transition packs here, we'll select that folder, we'll go to up to Edit, Copy, go back to our Project Manager, and go up to Edit, Paste, and now that brought that in. Right, it did not lose the link of the file, so that's good. So let's just go over to the media pool here and we'll import some footage to work with. Okay, well that should get us started. Take that clip. It's all slow motion footage I have here, but it'll work. See, now that's pretty harsh cut there. So let's see if we can do something interesting with that real quickly. Um, one thing you'll notice here too, is we have different frame rates in each folder. Now these are all the same transitions in each folder. It's just a matter of picking the right frame rate for your project. So this matches our project. So we can take a look at what these transitions are. So I have two viewers here, my timeline viewer here on the right and my clip view over here. Uh, if you don't have that, if you want to follow along, uh, you can make sure that you choose the right option here. The other thing is I want to see these play when I hover over them. So if we click on here, we can click live media preview and then we'll get that double click. So I can see what each of these does. This ground spin one looks a little bit interesting. I want to see how it looks on my actual footage. So the other tip is we need to make sure that the render cache is set to smart. Uh, I believe they said that there's an issue with it running on user. So just choose Smart Render Cache here. And what that'll do is render out the effect. Uh, so it'll take a few seconds for it, or sometimes a few minutes, depending on the speed of your machine, to render the actual effect. But um, it'll just play a little choppy before then, unless you have a super powerful computer, and it might it might just play smoothly without having to render it. And the other thing is, well, let me show you what happens if I just try to drag this over here. See, it comes over as just like a clip and that's not actually what we want. 
Um, so click up in here where it says edit and make sure decompose compound clips on edit is selected. And now watch what happens. See, it decomposes all the elements of this. And what we want to do is line it up to where the, the, the split is there between the two clips. Um, I actually want to move that down. Okay. So the thing is on top, this very top layer, it's still the preview. So we just want to um, first right click on here and get rid of this link clips here. Click away, select it again, and then we're just going to delete those top clips so that we can actually see our footage. And this will take a second. Mine is so slow right now. Make sure I have that render cache smart. Okay. You know, they didn't say to do this, but I'm just going to make sure that my render cache fusion output is on as well. And same here. Now where it's red here, this has to render before I can actually play it smooth. My computer is not really handling this out of the gate without... Um, well, the other thing is I don't have optimized Meteor on either, so I could always optimize these clips, which I'm going to do now just to see how that affects the performance on my particular computer. I think it was the same clip, just different aspects. So I'm just going to generate optimized media on that particular clip. So yeah, you'll definitely need a fast computer to be able to run these things. But that's really no fault of the transition packs themselves. It's just the fact that um, running anything, uh, the fusion base that's kind of heavy like this is going to uh, require a faster video card than what I have in this particular computer. It's, it's saying that it's fully rendered, but I'm still really having issues here. It's, it's choking quite a bit. There seemed to be an issue handling my 4K 120 frame per second footage on my computer. So I decided to try some regular non-slow-mo footage, which worked much better on my computer. Okay. So now let's try one of their transitions. The right frame rate. Yeah, let's just try that one. Okay. Delete that guy. So we see the red line there now. It might have been something just to do with that other uh, footage because it was super slow-mo and I believe it was 4K. That's not rendered yet, so we'll just let it do its thing. When that red line turns blue, we'll try again. We'll see what we're looking at. Almost there. Okay. Well, that took a little bit. I sped it up, but that's fine. Let's have a look. It's kind of cool, right? Especially if you forget to do, um, obviously you can do good uh, transitions in camera if you plan for it, but you have to plan that out. But if you have a bunch of footage and you haven't really planned out any transitions, this could kind of save you, spice it up. Um, I'm going to drop a few more clips in and we'll try a few different ones so you can see a few of the different ones uh, that they have to offer and, uh, and then we'll take it from there. So it looks like it's done rendering there. So let's take a look. That's the one we already saw. That one I really like. Let's look at that again. It's kind of a standard uh, zoom in, but the fact that we don't have to keyframe any of that or do any of that, it's a drag and drop. I would actually use that. Now look at that one again. 
kind of kind of cool when it gets too fancy like that though for me it's almost like those cheesy little um swipes and things that you're never supposed to use in an edit but all these cheap programs that do editing um offer those things so i'm, I'm not i'm not a fan of those i i think if you had text that would work though um you know having text swing in like that is cool but uh as a transition for video i'm not sure okay next one same again a text type thing might work for that depending on the footage it might work these are not obviously this is not less necessarily the best footage to show this because there's not a lot of movement in these to begin with again that's another fast one i like that i like that those zooms really work and i like that they give you um the audio for it as well okay those are my two favorites the zooms but i haven't gone through all of them so there's a lot more here i'm not going to go through every one of them in this video i just wanted to give you a good sense of um kind of how it was to install these packs and how you would actually go about using them um, i show my troubles here at the beginning just because i want you to have a good understanding of you know if you have a super slow computer that you know there's some some, some things that you need to deal with but um, at the end it can still be quite useful what I would suggest though is only apply these at the very end of your edit process because every time you move a bit of an edit this whole area here needs to re-render and that's gonna slow you down a lot and that's not gonna be too fun but if you leave it to the very last step of your editing process, even after color grading and everything, and then just drop the little transitions on that you need, the couple that you might want to use from this pack or any of their other packs that they have, um, then uh, yeah, then it could be useful. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll play this through one more time and then that's it. So I think that overall, if you have a powerful enough computer, these transition packs are quite interesting. Um, there are, like I say, other ways of accomplishing uh, transitions, whether you do it in camera or even spending a lot of work in post. So that's the benefit, I think, of transition packs in general, that the work is kind of already done for you. Uh, and like I say, on the downside, if your computer is not powerful enough to handle that level of processing, um, is similar to in the Adobe world, you can edit in Premiere no problem, but you may not have the powerful enough computer to uh, do the kind of work you do in After Effects. So same thing goes here in DaVinci because you're using Fusion, and Fusion is, is the After Effects um, equivalent. So if you think you get some value out of this transition pack or any of the others that our visual has to offer on their site, I'll have a link in the description and also a promo code for 15% off. Uh, use the word surefire pictures, all one word. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel and I appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.